a footnote just to kind of make sure you guys are here. So I mentioned Dr. Green now. He's 87, terrific guy. We have lunch whenever we can, which is usually three or four days. We went out for lunch yesterday, and um, somehow we talked about there are some people who are complainers and some people who aren't. And he said, I had a secretary 30 years ago, and um, he said, let me just tell you two anecdotes. He said, have you ever been to, you ever been to San Francisco? Anybody been to San Francisco? Yeah. Would you characterize it as a nice town? Yeah. One worth going to. He said, so my wife and I were planning to go to San Francisco. My wife happened to come into the office, and she mentioned to my assistant, Gloria Kalish, we're going to San Francisco. He said, yeah, I know. Uh, Arthur told me, and he says, you're going to hate it. Um, and then he gave another anecdote, and he said, I remember one day I had a client in the office. He had some coffee, he left about half a full cup on the table. And as she was leaving, he said, she leaves at 5 o'clock. Not 5.01, 5 o'clock. As she was leaving, he said, would you mind just taking the cup and dumping it? She said, not at all. He, as she's walking out, he says, you know, the cup is half full. She said, you know, Mr. Greenbaum, I would have looked at that cup and said it was half empty. So we got into the car. Uh, I mean, and Arthur has survived two heart attacks and uh, cancer, prostate cancer, and now he has cancer, um, but he ignores it. So he gets, he gets in the car and he says, you know, I really like the serious radio. And then there was a song playing, uh, Memories from Cats, Barbara Streisand sang. He said, what a great song. And I said, Arthur, there you go, complaining did. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm not sure how I got there, but that was kind of amusing. It's just a good human interest story. Um, we, by the way, do you know what the zoning requirements, the New Jersey people, do you know what the zoning requirements are for parking, for um, office use, commercial use, retail use? Actually, more often than not, it's five. Five. Five spaces per thousand. And actually, it's probably not unique to New Jersey. It's probably the case in Oregon, although you guys are getting a lot more progressive. Um, but I'll, I'll bet you, other than Chicago, I'll bet you it's five spaces. And yes? Are they permitting new construction with underground parking underneath the building any longer? Where? Well, I know New York City's not. Right. In New Jersey. Um, sometimes. I, one of, surely they wouldn't do it with an FBI building. Actually, they did. They did, I know. What a newer. I know. They also built that just after 9-11. And it's the same kind of open parking off the river. That's created. And the, the other thing is, they took away the ability of having a riverfront park there, which was kind of a. Where, where in Newark did you grow up? Excuse me? Where in Newark did you grow up? North Newark, Barstow. Barstow. Nice. Still, not, still a, not a bad area. So near Branchburg Park. Very nice area. What high school did you go to? Barringer. Barringer. Ancestral. Barringer, William Brennan. Oh. Peter Adina. William Brennan was uh, a justice on the New Supreme Court in around 19, early 50s. Was appointed by Eisenhower, went to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's right. Uh, and a very distinguished justice. And Eisenhower disappointment as it was. Uh, Ellen Warren. Warren. Both were disappointments to Eisenhower. Eisenhower, yes. Right. But to me, it gave me the chills. <laughs> um, so, anyway, five spaces per thousand. And this, I think, is relevant to anyone doing appraisals, is, is absurd. It's an absurd number. If you think of that at $3,000 on a service parking space, it's 15000 bucks. If you think about that for office or commercial or retail, it's 100000 bucks. So before you even build your building, you're building $100,000 worth of parking for 1,000 square feet. It's an absurd number. It's a disastrous number. And it's a very inefficient number. Um, so think about that, and we'll come back to that. Um, let me just say that one of the things we did and we learned is when these apartments were built, we reconfigured the surface parking lot. Um, there were 307 spaces. We reconfigured it. We, uh, as I said, we let we we leased out for 99 years a footprint for 131 apartments. It's a substantial building. And uh, we reconfigured the lot, and we went from 307 spaces to 275. So not a significant loss of spaces. Um, as part of the agreement with the ground lease, we assured the apartment owners that we would make available 175 parking spaces. 
but we said we will make them available. We will not reserve them. It causes me ang ang angst to see reserved spaces. Because if you think about your businesses, if you have 50 employees, typically on any given day, some people will be sick, some people will be in court, given what you do, some people will be out appraising, some people will be out trying to fare business. But it's very rare, if it ever happens, that you have 100% of the people there. So with apartment people, um, and while this is only about three blocks from the train station, the reality is most of the people who live there take their cars to work. So those spaces become available during the day. So we make available 175 spaces to the apartment people on what we call a non-reserved, non-dedicated basis. But they have an assurance that any time they get there, they'll find apartment space doesn't have their name on it, but they'll find the space. At the same time, we make available 275 permits to business people during the day. Um, so we, still send, we set, sell 450 permits in a 275 space lot, and now that's been operating since 1998. So for 14 years, there's never been a complaint. Um, it's called shared parking. Oregon's very aware of shared parking, certainly uh, Portland is. Um, and it's just something to keep in the back of your minds doing what you're doing. Um, and I'll get to a little more analysis of that, but it's, it's the idea that um, different uses have different peak demands at different times. Um, there's also an, an element, of, there's another aspect of shared park. I think I have a slide for that, so I'll move on. Uh, that garage that I showed you, um, here. Those buildings, this vacant lot is over here that I'll show you on the next slide. Um, to the left is the before that was the movie theater, which had been closed for more than 10 or 15 years. The building next to it had been a beautiful building, but the deteriorator was demolished. Um, and uh, an Israeli tank commander had uh, acquired the property. He had a fashion business in New York. Um, but he also got into development. In fact, if you were from the area, you saw that New York just popped out the tallest hotel, I think it was Courtyard by Marriott, last week. It's the tallest hotel in New York, if not in the world, and um, he's the developer of that. So if you know Israelis, they're, uh, they're not humble people. So he owned this parcel, the parcel next to it, and the parcel around the corner of the shaped <coughs> buildings. And he approached the parking authority and he said, I'm going to build parking beneath my building, an L-shaped building. And we said, you're free to do that, but you've got to figure that it's going to cost you $35,000 a space because it's very inefficient. An efficient structured parking garage is about 300 square feet um, per space. His probably would have been 500 square feet per space. It would have been below ground, and everything would have been speed ramps. And if you had a speed ramp, you're not parking on the speed ramp, so that's just space wasted for moving people from different levels. So, he didn't develop at that point, but a year later he came back to us. He said, when you're building your parking garage, would you build a level of parking below your garage and I'll build a tunnel under the driveway and uh, get parking from you? And we said, yes, we can, but it's still probably going to cost you twenty five dollars or $30,000 in space. And he said, we'll do it. Um, and then a year later he came back, and, because every time we kept saying, look, it's in your interest and our interest. When we build this garage, we'll make space available to you. We'll make it available on a 24-hour period, but we know that the, the, the reality is that most of your people will, will take their cars to work. Or because you're close enough to a train station, some of the people will choose to have one car instead of two, and some people will choose not to have any cars because it's such prox proximity to the train station. So after the third year, he came back to us and said, yes, let's do a deal. So I think we make available, he's got 149 apartments, I think we make available about 200 spaces to him. And the advantage is, during the day, we get people in there on a monthly basis. We get people in there on a transient basis. Um, and we get his partners. And the economics of structured parking versus surface parking, um, tremendous costs in operations as well. Surface parking, you're dealing with lighting. Um, but maintenance is marginal. It's the maintenance you deal with on a road driveway on asphalt. If you're talking about structured parking, long term, you need to seal the facility on a five-year, seven-year basis. Um, and you have a structure, you have either a concrete structure or a steel structure, you have elevators, um, you have more lighting because during the day, inner areas aren't well lit from daylight, so it's, it's a much higher cost of operation. 
And of course, you're carrying the debt service on $20,000 or $17,000 of space. So the cost probably goes up from $10 a month per space for surface parking for operations and maintenance to about $30 or $40 a month per space. Um, when you start getting users, and by the way, if you build parking in New York, you can make a fortune. In fact, I thought about taking my driveway, rolling it up, and putting it somewhere in the theater district and letting cars park on it. And it's good money. I mean, it's just amazing. You can pay 500 bucks a month for parking in New York City. It's real worth. Yeah, remarkable. Um, in Morristown, we don't have any rates anywhere near that. But if you do make space available for a rental building, for an apartment building, and make space available for monthly parkers, and also have transient parking, which generates more revenue on a per hour basis, you can start breaking in. So that's this story. And um, when we built that parking garage, this building had been vacant for nine years. Century 21 is an apartment store office at the World Trade Center in New York, very popular discount store. And the first new movie store was brought to Morristown. Um, and for the first time in nine years, that garage was occupied. Uh, in fact, our, one of the things we learned in the last 20 years is when you do development of parking or something else, talk to your neighbors so you have a sense of what their visions are. Um, we built this garage, we situated it. This, assume this is a 260 foot elevation. The block behind it is at about 280 feet. So we were able to develop the garage so that uh, you can enter <coughs> at the green. This is facing the town square. But you can also enter the second floor of this building from the first level of the garage. So it's very convenient. You can enter the third level of this building from the next level of the garage. Um, one of the things that's happened in downtowns in the last 50 years is you guys, if you, if you were in small towns, many small towns have little department stores or big department stores. That's a thing of the past. People don't want the inconvenience of going to upper levels. There was this store, Macy's, previously Denver's. There was another department store just on the other side of the town square, Epstein's. Um, it was there since 1914, I think. And, um, and the economics no longer work. And that's another story that I'll show you.